conversation for what is remaining. I've got Ines Didanza from Keru, Nikolokt. Where is Keru? I think it's Meru. Okay, I'm not sure. I don't think so. They impose their ideas on us. We Africans, we are the ones co copying. I think that's what you mean. Uh, the Western culture. We are not proud of our culture. Yeah, I totally agree with you, sir. Lawrence Kips, Kiprono. Mm. For me, they are exposing their culture. For example, taking photography of boys in Jandoni. And their parents end up seeing those photos at Facebook, which is against our culture. Okay. Big shame, people of Western, learn and change. Okay, I meant US, I meant Europe, not uh, Western Kisumu, not, yeah? Okay, but I, I <laughs> thank you. Same Karaja, watching from Gilogori, Kiabu. In fact, they impose their ideas, okay? Thank you so much. Karyokiwa Gataga Nagara. Gataga is watching, thank you so much, Karyoki. Where Paul from Nyeri, Ndani, eh? Akuna Chide Matamuchi. Eman James. Hi. Dominic African should be proud of our culture. Thank you so much. And Dan Kilinda. Dan Kodan Nikolok watching from Wundanyi. African should be proud of our culture. And Anthony BIH from Rongai. Hey, Mazes Yukombali, Rongai. They impose their ideas on us. Have you asked yourself why Satan is viewed as black, ugly creature and God is vice versa, meaning white? Uh, okay, fine. Okay. I hear you. I hear you. Okay. Keep those comments coming on our Facebook page. Do you think that the West, are, you know, values African culture? And you can also tell me, do you think also we ourselves, Africans, are proud of our culture? Some of the comments that have come in, I'd like to hear you, what you're saying. And also in the conversation that we are having about pro-choice, about the matters of abortion, you know. Let me know what you think. Right now, I'm going to take a, a few questions from my audience, three questions, brief questions, and then we have, we'll answer them. So we can start from that end. Uh, let's go. Okay, my question goes to Dr. Okafor. Uh, from your own pers perspective, can you, can you describe Africa as foolish for allowing a certain, s a certain summit to take place in our continent? You see, from, from the first statement you say that Africa is seen as a, as a dump site for concentrate, for concept Creatives, mm. yeah. So, do you think we are foolish enough to allow such kind of summit to be conducted in our continent? Yet, it is viewing us down through our culture. Very good. Yeah. Thank you so much. You can pass the mic to the gentleman right there, to to the lady, like the lady in front of you. All right, go for it. It's Technical College. My question goes to Teresa. Does the use of contraceptives increase sexual immorality in Africa? Does it increase sexual immorality in Africa? Thank you so much. And lastly, we've got the gentleman. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you very much. My name is Peterson. My question goes to Dr. Richard. And uh, the question is, you talked about popu popu uh, population. So, and you said that we, uh, women being allowed to increase um, the population, um, this would it shouldn't be the case uh, should be the case here in Africa instead of using con contraceptives now if we take a case like Japan they have always um, been against the issue of population and they have never encouraged this recently 2018 a good statist statistics shows that um, the country has so much developed and most of the people in the area are the aged who have made development take place Taking a country like Uganda and Kenya, developing um, a number of family members being more than 12 has even brought more poverty in Africa. So generating numbers in terms of population, won't that increase the rate of poverty mm -hmm. in Africa? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So the questions are there. Uh, so I'm going to start with, uh, with, 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 with his question. You can take up that, that question. Okay. Uh, you can respond to him directly. Yes. Um, I, I wouldn't say Africa is foolish to have allowed the conference to hold here, but I would say that um, Africa should have actually declared the conference unlawful because there is something known as freedom of expression and freedom of association. And I feel that pro-family people who expressed interest in attending the conference ought not to have been blocked. 
because that, that in itself shows a lack of transparency. And I think the government should have immediately declared the conference unlawful. And also considering that most of the things being discussed in the conference are against our religion, our culture, and against our family values. So all these things should have been brought to the table. And it's either whoever is behind this conference declares their true motives and also accepts our terms of reference and we dictate what we feel is important for our development and our population mm -hmm. or the conference is declared unlawful but um yeah I, I, I so this is my thinking i don't think it's foolishness but i think our government ought to have been a lot more um, responsive and um you know mm, taking into consideration the fact that parliamentarians in kenya were not accredited for me that is disrespectful okay thank you so much maybe uh, you want to take his question first or yes I could, okay uh, mm. or you off, want to add it to something okay. start off a little bit from where dr teresa started um icpd 25 is using the phrase accelerating the promise in sexual and reproductive health and rights young people out there that phrase is deceptive. That phrase is deliberately designed to help you develop a softer approach or to begin to tolerate abortion, to begin to tolerate prostitution, to begin to tolerate the sexualization of your siblings and your children that you're going to have in future, to begin to tolerate transgenderism, if I would say that, and for some reason, the zero document has a commitment asking governments to provide universal health care coverage for sexual and reproductive health and rights meaning that a person like me who wouldn't be okay with abortion on demand my taxes will be used to fund abortion meaning that nhif okay where we all are contributing money would cover all the diseases that are ailing us, including lifestyle problems, like gender reassignment hormones and gender surgeries. So that, that's why we need to be careful with the resistance, okay, the resistance that our government put up. You know, our president spoke clearly mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. we are going to commit to those things consistent with our development agenda, and we are not going to deal with things that he has always mm -hmm. called known issues all right now, now let, let me let me as you take up his his question let yes. me ask you something uh, mm. so that you can answer as you answer that question uh, of japan mm. you know the countries that have accepted what icpd is saying are developed okay they have uh, high technology their countries are doing very well economically they're doing very in militarily you know so it's, uh, w what and for us who we are saying no we don't want that we we, we are not doing well, by any uh, stretch of imagination. Okay. I will start with China. Mm -hmm. China tried to walk that path. It had these numbers, and it bought into that argument, and they applied this one-child policy, literally. Mm -hmm. As in, you would only have one child, then you will be taxed if you had a second one. The result was when a woman would conceive, she would go to an ultrasound, and once they would find the baby is a girl, they would abort the baby. So we get this whole generation of young men mm -hmm. in a developed country and they can't find wives to marry. The next thing is what? Homosexuality. You get the logic, the connection of the problems that we, 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 we are going through. So I would like to answer your question again in the, in the, in the platonic irony in Crito. Eh? Mm -hmm. You know, Plato asked this young man, uh, do the gods is something good because the gods like it or, 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 or the gods like it because it is good. The same question I would ask with Japan. Do you think that Japan is developed because they are few or they are few because they are developed? It depends. If you choose to pursue the development path, the numbers will drop naturally. The numbers will get regulated. But if we choose to say that let's control population as an end in itself, pulling down the numbers, we are going to pay expensively. Look at it this way. The recommended ratio in a classroom is one to 40 children, isn't it? 
okay quality education if you go in a school and say one teacher for the kids that's good all right the academies are having it lower one teacher 20 or whatever mm. in my estimation we young people who are looking for jobs need to know that for every 40 children that's a job for a teacher every 40 children that's a job for a teacher if you, if you understand that dynamic if we treat our people and the babies being born as an asset we are seeing jobs imagine the farmers out in Kirinyaga, the farmers out in uh, Nyandarwa, okay? The more people there are, the greater the market for what they produce. There is something connected to the economics of numbers there. It is not by accident that China and India are becoming an issue globally. It is their numbers. We have a continent here, Africa, with capacity to carry 5 billion people. We are only 1.2 billion. And we are the largest resourced continent. Are we together? That the governments, which are having the lowest total fertility rate, you know, f total fertility rate is calculated by the total number of women of childbearing age in a country divided by the number of babies born in that country, okay, in that mm. area, mm. okay. Once you get a, f a number, a result that is below two. That's what Dr. Kafor was saying, below replacement. Now, Denmark, Norway, Sweden, all these governments that are deeply excited about funding our population control are below replacement. They are paying our women to have children. They are paying our women to damage their ovaries and uteruses. There must be something that young people should see about that, whether those are real friends or they're not good friends. Okay. Yeah, Interesting. And, and let me add to what he said. The economy of Japan is already going down. It is depleting. And the reason is because Japan is experiencing what is called demographic winter, which is the population of Japan is imploding. It is reducing. And so their economy is going down. So you can see that there is a strong relationship, connection between population and economy. Now, why highly populated places in Africa are not experiencing this strong correlation of feeling the impact is because we need to diversify our economy and we need to be more self-reliant because we have been blessed with rich resources. But most of these resources are taken, there is exploitation because these resources are taken out of Africa in their crude state and then refined outside our country and then brought back to Africa and sold at a very expensive rate. So unless, uh, as soon as our government begins to manage our economy better, and as long as we don't have this problem of distribution of resources, and as long as we, have, we don't have issues around corruption whereby a few people are benefiting and do not want the economy, the, ma the, the population to feel you do not want large families to be supported and do not want the people to feel the impact of the resources that we have, then the problems are simply going to continue. But I need to answer her question because she mm. asked a very important question, which is, she said, is there a relationship between condom use and um, sexual immorality? Mm. Mm. You, there is a relationship because the problem is that what condom tends to do is that it tells you you can have sex and avoid the consequences of sex. Because you see, sex has a natural consequence. It could be pregnancy. And then the truth is that there are sexually transmitted diseases and sexually transmitted infections. Some of them are viral, which are incurable, and some of them are bacterial, which can be cured if you discover it on time. So sex is such a powerful thing. And it's only safe when you keep it within the confines of marriage. Outside of marriage, there is so much to lose and so much to contend with. Now, uh, sexual immorality is an addictive behavior. And people who engage in permissiveness suffer consequences as a result of that addiction. So what condom tends to do is that it tends to give people a false sense of security. A married man would say, okay, I can have sex with a woman who is not my wife and she will not get pregnant, you know, or... Um, a young girl can say, I can have sex and use condom and not get pregnant. But that is not the reality. The reality is that condom can be, uh, it is, does not guarantee 100% safety. It can slip, it can break, it, it, the material used in making condom is porous, and some of the 
um, uh, and, and doctors need to tell the truth. You know, World, Con World Health Organization needs to tell people the truth about the condom. So condom can slip during sex. It can break. It's porous. There are tiny holes that some of the virus are even smaller than those holes and can penetrate. So to use the condom, you are really taking chances. You may be lucky today. Tomorrow, you may not be so lucky. You know, so uh, there is a strong link because it gives us false sense of security, making people think that, yes, you can take the pleasure, remove the consequences. And I'm sorry, the consequences will still catch up with you sooner mm. or later. Okay. Yep. And, and so. we also need to emphasize when she, you see, the sexual act is meant to create trust. And that's why we keep it within marriage. Uh, the young people know this. They will use the condom today, the other day, the third day, chances are they will not use it the fourth time. Chances are that you will get out of the equation because the sexual union is usually meant to, to bond people. Mm. Now you're getting to bond with someone who you don't actually intend uh, to, to, to spend your, mm. to marry or spend your life with. So that's why the, the condom is not really a solution. It just grants uh, false security, as Dr. Teresa says. Now, now the question that I, I might have to ask as we, as we close it up as well, the, the, the world you are mentioning is a, a good world, is an ideal world, but the, what they will say is, but right now, there are diseases, there are problems, young people are having sex. Don't, yeah, so they, don't you think, therefore, these condoms and these contraceptives are actually a necessity, you know? Because, okay, we, the ideal situation is sex should be within marriage. But we, when you look outside, these kids are having sex as young as 11 years. Okay, so do we want an 11-year-old kid who is pregnant or with an STD, or should we at least allow this kid to be, to have, if... It's at least having sex, at least be protected from the STDs and the pregnancy. Uh, what, what would be a better option as we close it up? Uh, I don't know who wants to start to this. Okay. Yeah. You need to ask yourself, what is my objective in life? Where do I hope to go? You know, it, what do I hope to attain in life? You understand? So I think basically education is important. Quality education is important. And people should aspire mm. towards the good of this life, the higher goods of life. You understand? And we cannot just assume that our children lack control because that would be to say that children are like animals that don't have any self-control. I think parents have a role to play as primary educators and need to form children in self-control, in rest, especially when their bodies are developing, you know, in the age of puberty, mm -hmm. adolescence. They need guidance. They need, peer, and this is the job of parents, not the job of the school. Condom is not a solution. I'll give you a scenario. It's like baking a cake, you know, and then putting poison in, part, in a portion of that cake. And then I present the cake to you and tell you, this is my gift to you. But when eating it, careful, you know, because it has 30% of the cake contains poison, but the rest of it should be fine. Go ahead and <laughs> eat it. Would you take the cake? Would I'll you take eat the 70%. It? Or if you take a flight and mm. then they tell you, you take the 70%, <laughs> are you sure the 30 has not penetrated? That would be taking a big risk in life. Yeah, yeah. Or you take a flight and mm. you're told that this flight has 30% chance of crashing. Mm. Would you fly that plane? Well, unless I'm, I'm, I'm running away from zombies and... Uh, <laughs> From fire, yes. <laughs> yeah, no, I hear you. So uh, uh, I'm going to... Lewis Morio Mori Wanjiro is saying, following the talk very closely, the Western countries have, no, have noted uh, hidden gold in our culture. That's what they are after. We need to watch out. Okay. So now I'm going to give you a chance to... I'm going to give you a chance to say your final remarks as we close up the show. Uh, thanking you for, you know, helping us to understand what's happening with ICPD. And maybe if my, you think maybe I have left out something, maybe can give you a minute each to uh, give you a closing remarks. I'm going to start with the gentleman. Right. Richard? Um, yes, I, I need to point out that, uh, yes, it is true young, the young people are sexually active. Actually, there's someone who asked me a question recently. Uh, they started with the usual statistic. One in six of every girl, I think under 25, is uh, sexually active or pregnant. And, but, you know, you see it is one in six. When you flip it around, it means five in six are either not sexually active or they're not pregnant. Then it would seem that the wise policy has to be celebrating and affirming the majority and then helping the minority recover. The term we usually use these days is that young people who are not supposed to be sexually active, if they are, 
that's a form of delinquency. We need to rehabilitate them and return them to the flock. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope you get the argument there. Yeah. So uh, we shouldn't be giving them the tools. Now, the sexual and reproductive health and rights that ICPD 25 is about accelerating, it doesn't care about the children actually. Its interest is to take the children away from their parents, sexualize them, make them consumers and participants in the sex industry so that the big sex industry makes money. A young kid of 10, once they are activated sexually, they will demand contraception. Take it or leave it because they still have to go to school. And contraception is likely to fail. So they will demand abortion. This is a business entirely. And when the abortion takes place, the abortionists sell the baby parts. We know these facts about how they are selling the baby parts and making money of them. So it is an entire cycle. And if they have not gotten pregnant, they've taken the contraceptives, and the contraceptives give them cancer down the road, again, the pharmaceuticals companies make the money through chemotherapy and all this stuff. So it is an entire cycle that turns our generation. And I, I, and I appeal to the young people not to dive into the game because they are being used. And this concept of sexual and reproductive health and rights is just about sexualizing everyone and making sure that the money makers in the sex industries continue to stay afloat. That's what I would like to say. We are opposed to ICPD, not for the sake of it. It has a very good three no zeros at a zero maternal mortality, zero unmet need for family planning, zero gender-based violence. But the solutions they're offering are not good. Okay. So we organized side events for the purpose of offering alternatives that are consistent with our culture and our church teaching. We are offering the human dignity curriculum as an alternative to comprehensive sexuality education. We are offering femme and ovulatory cycle and fertility awareness as an alternative to contraceptives. And these things are scientific and they work 100%. But no one will invest money in them because they will not send money to the pharmaceutical industry. Thank so Richard, thank you so much for, for that. Yeah. I think Richard has made a very important point about the vicious circle, mm -hmm. you know, and why we need to be very, very careful about this obsession about sex and sexual permissiveness. He said it all, you know. So I think our youth should be encouraged. And we, on the other hand, should ensure that whatever law we accept, we should make sure that it intersects with morality. Morality is so important. We can be found deficit in morality mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, we would regret our action. So he's explained the vicious circle. He's explained that there is a form of exploitation going on. And he's explained that we actually had an alternative event suggesting authentic human solutions to the problems. And uh, these are alternatives we're offering, mm. and we hope that uh, we will be given a hearing. And we're, and we're meeting tomorrow. Uh -huh. uh, as they are closing in KICC, we will we'll be meeting in the Basilica tomorrow to pray from around 8 o'clock and give a declaration. We are calling it the Nairobi Declaration on Life and Family. Nairobi. Okay. Nairobi, Nairobi Declaration of Yes, it depends uh, on what you eat for supper. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Family first. Family first. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Uh, Teresa Okafo from Nigeria the Regional Coordinator for World Congress of Families, and Richard Kaketo, a lecturer at Catholic University of Eastern Africa, and also from Uganda, and Dominic from Kenya. Thank you. Uh, thank you for making time to be on my show. I really appreciate it. I hope that the conversation that you've had today has been helpful to you to help, to help you understand what's happening with ICPD, and maybe you still have further questions, so take time to ask. As we say, the devil is in the details. Sometimes, uh, you know, you need to go the details so that you understand where the devil is hiding, because may be presenting himself as an angel outside, but inside is that where the devil lies. So I hope that this conversation has been helpful to you, my dear viewers, and I watch again the show tomorrow from 11 to 12, and I hope uh, the conversation will continue. And if you have any questions, ask them. They can form part of another show. God bless you. Do have a good night and see you sometime.